Hello everybody, welcome to Wisdom from North, the place where we're diving into the deeper meaning of life and asking the big questions. My name is Janneke and today I have one of the leading authorities on out-of-body experiences and astral projection on my show, William Buhlman. Now William has been exploring out-of-body experiences for over 40 years and he's a trainer at the Mon Monroe uh, Institute and he has written three best-selling books uh, including including Secrets of the Soul, Adventures Beyond the Body, and the latest one, Adventures in the Afterlife. Welcome to Wisdom from North, William. How are you doing? Very good. Th thank you, Janneke. Uh, I'm very excited about speaking to you today because I discovered you in an interview on Afterlife TV with Bob Olson, and I really felt that you had a lot of uh, knowledge about out-of-body out experiences. And I'm very uh, fascinated by this subject because I've had some experiences myself in 2007 where I consciously tried to explore the uh, astral world. But let me start with going back because I find it very interesting that 40 years ago you were an atheist. Well, uh, yes, uh, I, I was essentially an atheist um, from childhood, from the end of childhood, um, yeah, I did not believe, I had rejected uh, the concept of religion probably when I was around uh, 19 years old, 20 years old. So it's been a lot, that was, so that was, uh, I, I did not connect with it at all, or it didn't resonate with me. But then a friend of you had an out-of-body experience, experiences, wasn't it like that? And then all of a sudden you had one. Yes, um, a friend of mine had a spontaneous out-of-body experience, a good friend of mine, and it motivated me to have the same. It was a life-changing experience for my friend. And I became totally intrigued by the topic, even though I didn't believe it was possible. And But I figured if he could do it, why can't I? So I studied the topic, and I found a technique called the target technique, which I practiced for 24 days. And on the 24th day, literally, I had my first self-initiated out-of-body experience. And it was, a, it was a mind blower. It's a total change of my everything, changed my entire viewpoint of life. I realized that we do continue, that other beings exist. It, it's a multidimensional universe. And I actually met dead people in some of my out-of-body experiences, which are just people. They're just living in a different vibrational reality. And it changed my entire outlook on everything to do with life and our continuing evolution as uh, consciousness. It was a, uh, it's a big life changer. Yes, it was for me too. I remember the day because right after I woke up that morning, I was walking around and thinking like, why are not everybody talking about this? This is going on and nobody's talking about it. I've never heard about it in school. And here I am having a knowing all of a sudden after 27 years, now I know that there's something more. It was truly, uh, yeah, mind-blowing. So yes, indeed. Uh, it changes everything because suddenly you become a knower um, instead of a believer. Right. And that really is a shift, a huge shift of consciousness. So uh, tell me, um, because this is my perception of it, that when we go to sleep, when we dream, we go to this astral realm that's what i've been taught like i don't know like i've experienced have had this experiences but i don't know really where i went but what i've learned is that we go to this astral plane when we when we sleep and that we are actually out of our bodies when we sleep we just don't know it so when we're out of body we're going to the same place is that your perspective too uh, yes, basically, yes. People, most people have no idea how busy they are at night. We're non-physical beings, and at night, most people begin to disconnect to some level with their physical body. Many of them just hover out of sync with their body. I've witnessed this myself during my out-of-body experiences, where you see people literally, their energy body or their consciousness is, is floating out of their physical body. But some people, I think it's basically due to a lack of fear, some people actually are moving around and doing things at night um, while their body is asleep. They're communicating, they're having 
they're learning lessons there. So there's even schools that people go to um, that that it's so in other words, the world is much more active place than we think it is. It's a multidimensional universe and we are multidimensional beings. We're a microcosm of the universe. And unfortunately, our sciences are, are still way behind in recognizing this. And yes, at night, many, many people have all kinds of experiences. Uh, I, the astral dimension is what I refer to. It's the next vibrational level, uh, the next major vibrational level to the physical. And it exists. It's not up or down. It's, it's here. It's just vibrant. It's less dense reality. And uh, that's where people, many people go during sleep and during their OBEs. Okay, so many things I want to, you know, talk about here. Uh, firstly, you say that some people are just hovering over the body. But when I dream, I remember that I'm in all sorts of places. Am I really there in another body? Or is it my psyche that's there or my consciousness? Well, I, I'm a little bit confused because I thought the astral body was going where I have the dreams, if you understand my question yeah it's uh, we, we we're very complex beings I don't feel that all dreams are out-of-body experiences oh I I don't I have found over you know for 40 years I've been having these experiences and I've written three books about them and studied them extensively and there are a multitude because we're multi-dimensional beings there's a lot in the world and the unseen world is much more complicated than uh, the simplicity that we try to uh, put put it. Many of our experiences are our actual experiences, but not all of them. Oh. Uh, our mind is a very powerful thing and our mind can also create imagery, internal imagery for us. Now, it's still a learning opportunity. There's still experiences. But they're all. But the, I I separate the two experiences. When you have an out of body experience, just to be clear, generally they're they're pretty mundane. Based on, again, I've I've done I've gotten eighteen thousand responses from surveys, and an actual OBE is generally for many people it's a very mundane. It's like observing your physical reality for most people, um, without all the. In other words, there's not not flying hippos and uh, crazy stuff going on around you. It's a very grounded experience. You're you're re-experiencing your physical reality in a way in a different vibrational level. And many of the dreams um, are I don't consider those that they're more internal creations of our mind. Just to be clear. Now, I, but there's, there's mixtures of this. Flying dreams, which many people have, and they're wonderful, lucid dreamers. That's one of their goals is to fly. Generally speaking, I feel that flying dreams are a mind's interpretation, especially if we can control it, of an out-of-body experience. And that is also going on. It depends on the individual's level of conscious awareness during the experience. It's always about our conscious awareness during every event or every experience we have. And that's what determines the, let's just say, the validity or reality of that experience. But does that mean that I might not have had an out-of-body experience, even though I thought I did in a way, that it was in my mind that that's a possibility? It depends um, what exactly was your experience. I had many. Uh, some uh, was uh, in lucid dreams that I woke up and I navigated around in the environment, in the okay. astral realm. Another was that I actually started vibrating and then I pulled myself out of the body and I knew my body was lying there. Uh, and then I started moving around and going out of my living room and flew out of the window. Well, that's a classic out-of-body experience, okay. that you, the second one that you described. Both of them probably were. The second one is a classic out-of-body experience. Generally, people have a prelude to an out-of-body experience, which includes vibrations, uh, partial paralysis. Um, all, I list 15 different phenomena that occurs in my books about the, the pre 
the pre, I call it pre-launch phenomena. And you, when you feel yourself separating, you're, you're, you're separating from your body. Okay. Okay. Yes, I would definitely call that a full, full flown uh, out of body experience. But then I understand that there's some mixed up uh, opinions about dreams, like where we are. I see that. Yes, yeah. yes. I think uh, lucid dreams, I consider it a continuum of consciousness. Um, and I write about this extensi extensively. A lucid dream is if you or you are in a lucid dream, you can upgrade the lucidity or consciousness in that dream and turn it into a full-blown out-of-body experience by elevating the percentage of consciousness in the experience. Mm -hmm. To me, it's always about the percentage of consciousness, the level of consciousness that's in the experience. Okay. If you can control the experience, if your full I-ness or ego awareness is present, that's an out-of-body experience. Okay. So, um, can you talk a little bit about the astral plane? Because uh, to me, that's very mysterious. <laughs> yes, sure, I'd be happy to. Um, the astral plane, everybody calls it, I, I refer to it as just the astral dimension. It's, it's huge, number one. We have to put it in perspective. It's several hundred times more expansive than the physical, to put it in perspective. I think that's important, number one. People consider it like it's the same. It's just another one level. The astral plane has many vibrational levels, and it, and some people say there's seven. I had, I find no, uh, I found it's much more extensive than that. In other words, it's it's it has many different energy levels, and when we leave our body, we're vibrating. Our energy body is at a certain frequency or density. Let's call, use the word density, and each the astral has many densities levels. And it depends on your state of consciousness, what you experience. If you're experiencing a physical like representation of the physical, then you're in the lowest section of that dimension. But as we raise our vibration rate through techniques like awareness now that I teach, we enter the higher vibrational levels and less dense regions of the astral. It's all about levels of density, probably is the easiest way to understand it. And there's trillions and trillions. It could, we don't even know. No one knows how many. There could be trillions of people living. And there's unlimited amount of realities because they're created by collective thought. And for instance, the middle, what people refer to as the middle astral, is generally where people enter at death. When you hear about this transition of consciousness, they are generally going to around the middle area of the astral, which is consensus realities created by loved ones who, who are currently living there. And these realities are just like the physical world, many of them. And that's when many people think this is an airy fairy kind of energy environment. It's not. Most of these realities are created by large numbers of people, just like they do here. I call them consensus realities. For instance, all the believers, let's say, a Buddhist, um, all the Buddhists would go to a certain, a certain level of Buddhism. They would go to a certain reality, and they have people have their own realities based on their own state of consciousness. There's realities for Islam. There's realities for, let's just call it right wing Christians, um, the, and all of these realities are molded by the state of consciousness of the collective group. And it's a very firm reality. It's three-dimensional. It's just like the physical. It's subtle, but it's all relative to yourself. So it's, it's in other words, there's countless realities. Most of these realities are very much, surprisingly, like the physical world. They're just less dense. But that makes sense uh, in the sense that many have who have had near-death experiences are saying that, you know, if they are from this Islam, that yes, I saw Allah or uh, Buddhists are talking about Buddha, etc. Because I've heard many accounts of that. But it doesn't make sense when a person who is, I don't know, like... Um, 
uh, all of a sudden experienced something else that was uh, a surprise, like all of a sudden went to hell and was this normal, beautiful person, but had this hellish experience. Uh, that happens too. And I'm thinking that that didn't fit with their belief system. Because it's not always like that a Christian goes to a Christian heaven in a way. Oh. No, it's, it's, it's more, that's why I use the term, it's about their state of consciousness. It's about their state of evolution as soul. That's another way to look at it. You know, we don't know the state of consciousness of people. Their belief systems are not the only, that's not the primary thing. That's an important part of that makeup of our state of consciousness, but it's not the core issue. I mean, if there's many people that have negative states of consciousness, have we know that. We probably, we all know someone that's constantly negative. And it doesn't matter what they believe or what religion they follow. If their state of consciousness is totally fear-based, for instance, totally immersed in this concept of uh, someone's out to get them and there's a devil and all these negative concepts, that's going to influence the reality they experience because they will go to the reality that resonates with their core state of consciousness. And I think that's exactly what happens. For instance, many people that have near-death experiences, and especially OBE experiences, they don't know what's happening. And they, they start out fearful. Being fearful in an out-of-body experience, and I write about this in Secret of the Soul, being fearful will create a fearful or fear-based environment. Just like if you're very, very open and spiritual, that will affect your out-of-body experience because we are interacting. It's a very fluid reality. We are creating essentially our own reality often in the way that we hold our mindset or over. And this is this is a lifetime, many lifetimes for that matter, of, of our mindset that's, that's intrinsically program within us. Yeah, that's where it gets complicated because let's say, you know, I, you go a certain place when you die and I go a certain place, but this is Yannick and William. And if we are multidimensional beings and everything happens now, why is it so important what I do as Yannick now if I have all these other incarnations or have all these other belief systems? It's very important that we do the best we can to elevate and elevate our state of consciousness to the highest. I talk about this in my latest book, Adventures in the Afterlife. That's what the story was about, of someone dying on page seven, the lead character dies, and they go to an afterlife reality that is a reflection of their mother's belief system, essentially. Their mother's? And, they, their, and their collective belief system. They were, they were believers in a certain, they had to, so he ends up with his mother initially. And he realizes that there's endless other dimensions that he begins to explore. It all, it's all, it's important. Get back to what you were mentioned. This is very important. It's very important that we essentially work on ourselves spiritually because it's the only, only thing that we take with us at death is our state of consciousness. No possessions are gone. They're all junk. They're worthless. The only thing we carry with us is our own state of consciousness. And Buddha said this, it's our job is to purify our own mind, as the Buddha would say. And I'm not a Buddhist, but I, can, I, I understand the truth. The, the higher we can get our own state of consciousness, the, the, the freer we are from fears and false belief systems and negative um, let's just say negative beliefs that saturate us. The freer we are, in a sense, the higher the reality we can experience. That's why it is important what we do in the physical world. Yeah, I'm, I'm really realizing that, that, you know, self-development is not a luxury. You know, it's something important. It's not just a hobby. It's something oh, it's, really important to do. It's, it's central to our entire evolutionary cycle. We are evolving. And, the, and it's so important to recognize that our state of consciousness is it. It is all we have, and we have to really work on ourselves. Whatever method that is for you, everybody's different. You know, everybody talks about different paths. True, but the bottom line is we have to spend 
make some effort to really, as some people would use the word, cleanse our state of consciousness, to get it as pristine as possible. I talk about this extensively in some of my afterlife talks about preparing for the afterlife and really taking a hard look at our beliefs and our self-talk that we have. You know, every day we, we spew 40,000 thoughts, the average person. You have to start to look at what am I putting out? What am I generating within myself? Is it a positive me message to myself and the world around me? Or am I spewing possibly uh, um, I can't I, negative messages about ourselves? This influences us hmm. because th our state of consciousness, our, all of our thoughts, our beliefs, our self-image, that goes with us. That's the only thing. So it's so important, I feel, to really take a hard look at ourselves. But uh, am I correct to say that we've never lost that, OK, we can perhaps if we had a much fear in our lives, we can, uh, you know, reproduce that in the afterlife. But eventually we have the opportunity to wake up and, uh, you know, get more wisdom and then go to lighter places. Yes, it, we're always in a constant state of evolution. But I think it's important that people, I think it's important to wake up to the fact that we are it. It's nothing's external to us. Uh, like, um, it's, it, there's an old saying that Buddha had that uh, no one can save you but yourself. We have to work on our own state of consciousness. Some external belief system is not going to give you some form of, uh, let's just say, enlightenment or salvation. It, it has to come from within yourself. And I believe that's what spiritual masters have been saying forever. Unfortunately, these concepts have been, let's just say, twisted over many centuries. What about guides and angels? Won't they be able to help you and enlighten you? I mean, if you are lost? Yes, to a degree, they're available. Guides are always available. But you, we have to be open to the guidance. OK, OK. And that is what many people are. People become rigid in a belief system. You're you're born. Let's just say you're born into any any religion. I'm not going to name names. And that's the only thing you've ever learned your entire life. You know, nothing but one with the doctrine of one religion, let's say. That's a very narrow viewpoint of spirituality in the world. And here the greatest the greatest problem facing humanity is a lack of knowledge about ourself. It's the cause of all wars. It's the cause of all poverty. It's the cause of all, every, all the ills of humanity is, say, if you scale it back, it's due to a lack of spiritual knowledge about ourselves. That's why out-of-body experiences are so important. Out-of-body experiences give us that wonderful, powerful opportunity to actually experience our true self, our inner self, beyond this temporary facade and vehicle of the body. But how can suddenly you... Suddenly we become aware, oh, I'm immortal. If I harm another, I'm still responsible for that. Because there's, not because there's a judgment, because we continue. There's energy that cause and effect. But how can you be sure that the outer body is uh, experience is neutral? That's what I'm wondering about. Like, you know, doing all of these interviews, I get uh, new thoughts and perspectives all the time. And sometimes I, I think, what, what if that's just another thought uh, belief system again? Uh, what if I never find the truth? Like, how can I find the truth? And is there one truth? So if I have this outer body experience, maybe it's a projection. You know, again and again, a projection. That's a very good point. If you're totally indoctrinated into, let's say, any um, religious philosophy, and you have an out-of-body experience, you're probably just going to re-experience your own philosophies. Right. That's why I write about, and I in my classes, I teach the concept of experiencing or make it a goal to experience your spiritual essence in this lifetime. That's the only way you'll ever know. You're absolutely right. The, if you're totally indoctrinated about some propaganda, it doesn't matter what it is, religious propaganda, 
and you have an out-of-body experience, you're probably going to enter, you're probably just going to be reinforcing that propaganda. But you have to go beyond that. That's the key. Out of An out-of-body experience is not doesn't give you all the knowledge unless you go beyond the astral, go beyond the outer dimensions of the universe. This is why I teach a technique called experiencing your higher self. During an out-of-body experience or during deep meditation, when you begin to disassociate from the body, you basically, you request or demand to experience your core spiritual essence or what I call the higher self. If once we experience the higher self, then we go beyond all, we go beyond duality, we go beyond the mind and all its games, we go beyond the ego, we go beyond, we're going to the core essence of ourselves, which is non-form based. And it's total, that is the benefit that I teach of an out-of-body experience. Having an astral out-of-body experience is the first step out of the crib. That's the first step. Then, during your out-of-body experience, you, you stop, you center yourself, and you demand to experience your higher self. Demand to, and this is, then it becomes powerful. When I do this, I feel like I'm shooting up through layers of color within myself. And the next thing I know, I'm floating in what I can only conceive as a sea of white light, pure love, pure awareness. Not, it's impossible to describe this kind of experience. That is, that's where the answers are. The true answers are beyond the duality, beyond all the beliefs of man, because they're all flawed. Anything man made, I have found is flawed. Let's face it, and I've been saying this for years and years, one of the first things I learned in my out-of-body experiences when I began to get beyond the astral was that I'm not a humanoid. Consciousness is not human. <laughs> Consciousness is using a human body. Consciousness is pure awareness. It has no physical-like form. It's, but it uses a physical-like body for experience, to be able to experience the physical world. But it's, 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 in other words, the physical body is just an expression of soul to learn, to grow, to, the, to evolve. We're not humans. We're not male and female. None of these things are truly us. When you truly have a spiritual experience, you people realize, oh, my God, this is what I really am. I'm pure consciousness, no form, but completely awesomely aware. And you realize that you're the creator of vehicles of consciousness. And you are using your body as a tool for education and evolution. That's where the answers are. And I agree with you. Experiences in the astral plane will not give you the answers to the mysteries of life. It, they won't. But they're a stepping stone because you're moving inward. Just like in meditation, it's the same thing. You're moving inward into yourself and into the universe. And the, all of the answers come from within us. They're never external to us because we are a microcosm of the entire world for all that is. It's up to, it's our great task is to go inward, find a method to go inward through deep meditation, through out-of-body experiences, through trance work, whatever it may be, shamanic journey. You know, there's a lot of different methods people are using today, but they all have one direction. They're all going inward. Lovely. I love hearing that. Uh, so interesting. So uh, did I understand you right that you have actually been to these higher levels beyond the astral? Yes, can I you, have. But, can you explain you know, how that was? It, it, it took, you know, this is not something that happened overnight. I mean, I had experiences uh, that are just, after 40 years of doing, I do a daily technique every day. I've been doing it for four decades. And sometimes you have astral experiences, sometimes all kinds of experience because the universe is vast. But occasionally I have these type of experiences that are beyond anything. It's difficult to even talk about them because they're, they, how do you compare something with no form and no duality and try to share it when there's nothing, there's nothing to compare it to? But I strongly feel that is the real benefit to out-of-body exploration. 
And it's the real benefit of deep meditation and yoga, essentially, or this concept of union. It, all of these things fit together. They're not in a box. We have a tendency because we're in a linear duality universe. We try to put everything in a box. OBEs over here, near death here, uh, meditation here. And it's not so. They're all about going inward. The question is, how far inward can you go with that technique for yourself? So you can go beyond the mind and experience your true self. And that's what's powerful. And that's what self-initiated out-of-body experiences gives it that opportunity. So is it possible, for example, to go out of body and experience things on this earth, like the pyramids, or just that I can travel over to you and see what's actually, you know, behind you there that I can't see, but if I was out of body, I could actually see what was there? Yes, it's possible. There, people do it all the time. Um, you know, I teach a six-day workshop at the Monroe Institute, and people have all kinds of experiences. Uh, they, there's no limit to what we're capable of experiencing. But see, that's traveling par on a parallel dimension. Yeah, because I was well, curious now, what is that then? That is an out-of-body experience on the, on the lower astral, or what I call the parallel world. The parallel world. Okay, so, and it's that's similar to Earth. Yes, it's, it's because it, nothing exists in a vacuum. The universe is a multi-dimensional continuum, I have found. The universe is of one less than one tenth of one percent of the totality of this vast continuum of energy. We're the outer epidermis layer. The physical world is the epidermis layer. And when you have an out of body experience or near death experience, you're beginning to shift or move inward within the subtle substructure of matter. And that's where that's what people are observing. They're observing if you only move one level in, you're still observing the physical like substructure. It's and science, this whole concept of parallel universes ties into this, um, right. that nothing can exist in a vacuum. Okay. Wow, it's so vast. So uh, I'm curious, have you been like traveling out in the universe and seeing the stars? I mean, that's, that would have been something I would like to do. Well, there's no limit to what you can do. What eventually you get to a point where physical like phenomena loses its interest. Oh. And you're more involved in finding out what I want to know what I am. That to me is the great mystery of the universe. Hmm. That is the greatest mystery. If we can solve, if all of us can solve what we are, then we've solved all the questions of the universe because we are a microcosm of the entire multidimensional universe. And when we, that's the big question. For many, many years, probably for the first 10 years, I explored parts of the astral and it was fascinating. It's exciting. You're doing all kinds of things. Can you tell us a little bit what you experienced so that people well, who want to start with this know what, what they might expect? Well, first thing most people like to do and what I like to do, you want to prove it to yourself that it's real. So I went and I observed people doing stuff. And then I called huh. them, asked them, really? you know, jot, when I come back, I would jot down the time of day. And these were very, I call them etheric experience. They're the very dense, they're the parallel world experiences when you're still in a dense energy body. Could they notice you then? No, no, no you're totally out of phase with their, their no, very, it, there are, rare cases, but very generally, if they do notice you, you would look probably like a, a vague shadow. Just like, that's what a ghost is. A ghost is a person, a dead person, just vibrating slightly out of phase. There's nothing, there's no ghosts, they're just people. You know, we have to grow up eventually and realize that. They're people that are still attached to the physical, so they're hovering very close in vibration. They're just slightly out of phase. But anyway, yep, you, there's no limit. That's what I recommend people to do. Center yourself, then move away from your body 10 feet because there's a tendency to be drawn back into your body. Like almost like a magnetic pull there is. So then do whatever you need to do to verify it for yourself. 
But the most important thing that you can do is to demand to experience your higher self. Your higher self now is the affirmation that I use. I move 10 feet or so away from my body, okay. center myself, and then I demand higher self now or spiritual essence now, whatever phrase resonates with you. And, and then you begin to shift inward. Your consciousness begins to shift inward to other levels of energy and consciousness within yourself. Because remember, we are the path. Everybody talks like the spiritual path is out there somewhere. We are it. We're a microcosm. As we go inward, we're moving actually inward in, within our multidimensional self. So the a, etheric, the astral body is our path, part of the path inward. And then there's the mental body, farther inward, higher vibrational. Then there's the subconscious body, even higher vibration. And then eventually, if we continue to go inward within ourselves, we experience our higher self or our essence, which goes beyond duality, goes beyond form. That's interesting and, because I haven't seen it like that at all. I've seen like, you know, these layers outside of me. As no, these there's bodies. no layers outside of you. You are it. They're all within you, different levels of density within you. There's huh. nothing outside of us. That's the great falsehood. That's been prop. That's been programmed out there into the group consciousness. But we still have the aura outside of us, don't we? The aura, but the aura is part of. That's our own energy field. It's still inward. Okay. It's okay. less dense. Okay. The aura layers of the aura are layers of us. Right. It's us. Okay. We're walking around with the entire universe, all within us, and what people perceive as an aura. They're seeing their etheric energy field. But what is it? It's less dense, isn't it? It's vibrating at a higher frequency. In other words, when everywhere we go, the entire universe goes with us <laughs> because we are the center. We are the microcosm of it. Yeah. And that's why the, the yogis have been saying this for 2,000 years. The path is within us. Hmm. It's not about a belief system external. It's not about man-made philosophies. We've existed before all human philosophies as consciousness. The, we are it as we move in where we experience our etheric body or what you call your etheric self, that energy field that we see around us. You go further inward, you, en you enter the astral field, which is us, inside of us, within us. You follow me? It's, yes, that's yes. That's what's so exciting though, because once you realize that we are it, there's no need to waste your time looking outside. And that's what many people, that's what I find to be the biggest waste. It's like looking, you can't, the answers are not found in matter or in man-made beliefs because we are the answer. Mm -hmm. We just have to awaken to the fact that we have to go inward through meditation, through whatever the journey method is, deep yoga, there's all kinds of forms of deep. I'm not talking about Hatha yoga with postures. I'm talking about the deep yogas, the Raja yoga, the Kundalini yogas, where you go inward, inward, inward. That's where the answers are. Yeah. Yeah. It's very exciting. It, it is. Uh, you, you gave me some new perspectives now. Uh, but I think uh, it's very difficult for my mind. I mean, even though I'm very open for spiritual concepts and everything and I've had my own experiences I'm very out there I'm very into duality but you know I'm a human being so that's my reference point all the time yeah. and I haven't been going that much inward because when I meditate it's usually just silent and I don't experience anything so I haven't found that much inside in a way uh, and I'm very like intellectually seeking as well I know that so it's, yes. it's, a, it's a journey, uh, yeah. Yes, that's why I teach self-initiated out-of-body experiences for the last 30 years, because I found that to be the best, and it doesn't resonate with everyone. It's, there's many, I've, I'm like you, I did not get fulfilled with meditation at all. I mean, I, I, I still meditate, but it's, it's, it's a peaceful experience of centering. Out to me, out-of-body experiences were much more active, 
it gave me that opening I needed to begin to become an explorer of my inner self. And that resonated with me. It was active. I, I, and it was, that's why I think it's becoming more and more popular in the United States. I mean, uh, a lot of people are beginning to practice self-initiated out-of-body experiences because they're not getting the results they hope to, got, to get from uh, meditation alone. And the meditation, I start with meditation when I do my techniques. I center myself, I deep breathe, and then from the deep from meditation, I go into techniques of self-initiated out-of-body experiences. Yeah, because for, for me, it was like I meditated, and yes, it was nice and calm, but when I started doing these practices for out-of-body experiences, all of a sudden, experience this vibrational state was something I have never experienced before. And I was like, I've never had this experience or I can't remember it. And all of a sudden I got proof and proof and proof uh, that I needed. And uh, yeah, it changed everything. But can you talk a little bit about the, the actual body that we're in? Yes. Um, it, it, let's talk about the, the, the denser energy body. It's very, very flexible. Remember, we are not physical creatures, beings at all. That's not who we are. That's the first thing. We're not even humanoid. I already said this. It's very important. We, our energy body is a construct of our mind, essentially. And when we have an out-of-body experience, it all depends on your own self-conception. You probably were still a female because that's your self-conception of yourself. I think so, yeah. That's a, but you can, your energy body I once had, I, not on once, but on several occasions, I initiated an out-of-body experience by stretching my energy body arm. When I was half out of my body, I reached up and grabbed the light in the ceiling of a, a, a um, chandelier type thing and literally pulled my energy body out of my physical body. This was like a, a six-foot stretch of my arm. My point is that there's no limitations to an energy body, because it's all a vehicle of our consciousness. Matter of fact, you can change your energy body, and I've experienced this, wow. and so have many others. Shaman have been doing this for 10,000 years. You can actually change your entire form. See, I didn't know that. I thought that I had one physical body then i had this astral body oh, and i in my mind it was blue and it was very flexible i was just like yeah. this uh, moldable thing but i yeah. thought it was well, fixed i, I guess i experienced the same thing also i my experience if you look at uh, my hands i look at my hands are often blue right they're like blue stars a million of blue stars in my hand but they're incredibly flexible uh, there's no, it's only limited your own creativity because it's no longer physical. And like I said, I have and other people have, I can change in what happens. This is really gets fascinating. As you prolong your out of body experiences, you begin, your humanoid form slowly begins to dissolve away. This is what, this is what probably 35 years ago, 37 years ago. When I realized this, it was a total mind blower because I too thought, well, my astral body is just like my physical body. And then as I prolonged my experiences, I started to begin my arms and my legs begin to just dissolve away. I no longer needed them. My mind was, I moved through my, my mind was moving me. And I realized then that as consciousness, I'm not human. I can be anything I want to be. And this is exact. We have the capability of creating any outer form once we're out of body, if you if you would wish to focus on it. But much more, much more exciting is the fact when you're out of body, you can just remain open minded. And when you use terms like spiritual essence now, you'll begin to go inward and all that humanoid facade melts away. First, you become like a teardrop of consciousness. For, I'm using form-based concepts. Then a globe of consciousness, 360-degree vision or perception, because you don't have eyes. People forget there's no air in the afterlife. There's no eyes. 
There's no breathing. There's no lungs. There's no biological bodies. We are incredible, non-physical, non-form-based beings. And it, it, it's even logical. There's no air in a non-physical reality. There's no molecular structure. So we have total freedom to create whatever we want. But what's wild is that we slowly revert to what we truly are, which is essentially pure consciousness with the potential to create any vehicle of form like our bodies. Our bodies are a vehicle, a temporary vehicle of form that is molded for us to have these experiences in the dense epidermis of the universe. And it, but it's wild because we have this capability to explore inward. And don't ever limit yourself to just one, one biological form because certainly that's not who we are. Yeah, I remember, I just remember when you talk now that uh, when I was out of body, I got hurt. I, I flew around and all of a sudden I flew into a building and it was like, ow, and it really hurt. And I'm like, how can this hurt? And I tried to uh, pull my hand um, through the wall, but it, I couldn't. But then I was like, hello, Janneke, I'm out of my body. Of course I can, you know, push the door or the wall. And then I managed to do it. And I feel uh, a lot of the times when I doubt that I can fly, when I'm lucid or out of body, then I can't fly. But then I just have to believe I can fly, I can fly, and then, you know, I take That's, off. Because your mind is controlling the yeah. experience. It's very true. You're, you're, you are creating your own experience through your own inner belief system. It's, and it's very important that we, that's why it's so important that we cleanse ourselves of any negative or fear-based or limiting beliefs. Believe, now this may sound strange to many, but this, this group consensus, 7 billion people on the planet, and they all, they're running around, they all think they're human beings, physical human beings, which is fine. That's what we, we have to, we've been trained to accept this in the live in this world. But once we leave our bodies, either through temporary measures or through our, or through death, all bets are off. We have the capability of unlimited freedom if we accept it. But unfortunately, most people have never been taught that. They're so indoctrinated with this concept that I'm a human female. They continue to be human females after death. They've only moved this far into the universe. <laughs> okay. So it's only a fraction. We have to wake up to the fact of who we are. That's what I mean. The greatest threat to humanity is lack of spiritual self-knowledge because we limit ourselves not only in now we limit ourselves in the afterlife as well yeah i'm starting to realize that and this is because uh, i mean it's important because these realms are thought responsive right so whatever yes. you think about will manifest absolutely that, uh, right the, the entire universe is thought responsive and as we move inward into the less dense regions they become more increasingly thought responsive. So we have to have incredible thought control. That's part of the training we're here for. Mm -hmm. We need to develop personal responsibility for our thoughts. We need to have folk ability to focus our thoughts so we can effectively, let's just say, negotiate and navigate in thought responsive environments, which is our true home, our true, the physical world is thought responsive, but it's slowed down tremendously by the density of matter. But we still know today that we create our reality. It just is a tougher slog because matter slows down the process. Hmm. But once you leave your body, you're into another. You got to, It's important to learn the rules of the road, whatever road you're on. That's why I write. That's why I wrote three books. I go into extensively about what are the non-physical rules of the road? What are you capable of? What can you do? Where can you go? How do you navigate these various realms? These various dimensional realms have different energy rules. None of them are like the physical, but they still have their own basic concepts, laws of energy, let's call it. We have to learn how to function in these realities. Unfortunately, the religions have done a very, very, poor job in teaching people about the afterlife and how to navigate thought responsive environments. 
they've they failed in their one thing they should be doing and that is teaching humanity about that how to function as a spiritual being in the afterlife how do we how do we maneuver from level to level in these this multi-dimensional universe this is what i write about extensively this is what evolution is about the evolution of consciousness is the inward evolution of us our consciousness so we become increasingly aware of our own potential as a non-physical species but do you think that uh, everything happens now like a lot of people are saying that there's no time there's no time there's no time no there's because we're immortal when you leave your body there's no time the time is just a it, what we call time is just marking of the deterioration of matter so or, everything uh, happens now I feel strongly it does. I, we can't wrap our, mi our, our, our mind around that, but yes. Okay. It's, uh, when we leave our bodies, there is no time. I know that for a fact. There's no time. Remember, what's time to an immortal? We're immortal. All of us, all seven billion of us are immortal. It's wonderful. Well, it, it doesn't, you've, most people have forgotten the fact that they're immortal. And no one has really stressed that. The religions touch on it, but it's not really taught about the. That's why it's so important that we learn and we grow about our, the nature of ourself and our reality. That's why it's so important to learn this stuff. Yeah, I just got a thought in my head. Like, what if, you know, I were to have an accident tomorrow and die like that, and I didn't have time? You know to practice everything you said what can i do what is the best thing to do you're there you you're dead you're in this other place i mean is it seeking out the light i i, I know it you have written a book about this uh but um i just uh yeah i want to hear if you have some thoughts on like how you can what you can do if you have a sudden death well, the first thing I would do is focus on my highest spiritual intention. I, what I would be doing at the moment of death, I was once on an airplane, I'll give a quick story. I was on an airplane uh, in the States and an engine gave out, started smoking and they had to do a crash landing. Wow. This is a big, this is a 737, a big jet. and. Um, it was one engine, there was fire, smoke coming out, one engine, and everybody was praying and a lot of the people were crying, we were in crash positions. And the, what I did was just focus on my affirmation, higher self now, higher self now, higher self now. I feel very strongly that we have to focus on what we perceive to be our highest intention, our highest spirit. It could have been spiritual essence now spirit saturate your consciousness in your highest spiritual intention number one now this plane ended up landing fine and everything but that is but it could have crashed um the point is that is what i would be doing not only in the process of the death but after after my entry into my transfer remember death is nothing more than a transfer of consciousness from your outer biological vehicle to your inner astral vehicle. It's still not you, it's not soul. That's the problem out there. Everybody has this childish viewpoint of body, mind, spirit. It's we're much more complex than that. And we transfer our, most people will transfer their consciousness to their astral. During that transfer process, higher self now, spiritual essence now, spirit. And when you arrive and yet, in that when the transfer is complete and you're in your astral body, I would continue that process. This is exactly what the Tibetan Book of the Dead is taught. They talk about going to your higher self, but they use different terminology. Yeah. They call it the Bardos and they have their own terminology. But in other words, they clear light of the void, go beyond all form-based realities. In, in Tibetan Buddhism, they teach that when you're on the other side, you focus on now I enter or now I am the clear light of the void. It's their terminology for going beyond all form based realities. So going, they knew what they were talking about. 
I yes, I feel they do. They just had terminology that's so different than than we use in our culture. But I, I write about this in two of my books too, making that as a reference point. That it's all about us and our focus and our intention during these pivotal. Death is can be a a it can be a terrible negative experience. It can be a fear-based experience, or it can be a literally a launch pad of consciousness where you can enter and experience your highest spiritual self. It's all we make it what it is today. If you and that's the problem that I find out there in our world, that the religions haven't taught these principles. They 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 haven't taught anything about the afterlife. You know, there's very little mention of the afterlife in the entire Bible. The word heaven is used and, and revelation. That's and essentially it. There's no description except a brief, brief paragraph in Revelations about this golden gate and the city. That's it. There's no guidance. What what we need today is more knowledge about this so that we're comfortable and we have a plan. We need a, people, I feel, we need a spiritual plan for our transition. And this is what the Buddhists talk about, the Tibetan Buddhist. Now, a lot of it doesn't resonate with a lot of Westerners because it's done in their cultural context. But strip away the facade, and it all comes down to focusing on your spiritual essence at the moment of death and then during the process and as you enter the other dimensional realities. That's the key. I'm realizing that it's so important that we have these conversations, or I've felt that a long time. And I just uh, want to end with uh, one question um, to put science into this. Is there any way we can prove uh, an afterlife or an out-of-body experience? By having them yourself. <laughs> okay, that's the that, only way? That's the best <laughs> way. There's uh, Unfortunately, it's very difficult to prove to anyone's real satisfaction but that's why I always, for 40 years, I've said the same thing. Prove it to yourself. I don't care what the rest of the world believes. I'm not trying to sell anything. The point is, we all have our own capability. Have your own experience. Prove it to yourself through your own out-of-body. Do the techniques. They're simple. It's easier than meditation. You, you just do the techniques I have on my website at astralinfo.org. It's they're free. They're right on my website. Do it for 30 days. Commit to a daily technique. And the majority of people can have their own experience and prove it to yourself. I'm glad you said that because we don't have time to go into all the techniques, but then they can go to your site and get everything yes. there. And there's a yes, lot of stuff online also. So there's a lot of techniques everywhere. So people can find that. I think that's that's yes. the easy part. Okay. <laughs> yes, I, I have 30 techniques on my website, astroinfo.org, that they can read. Wonderful. So they don't even have to buy a book. It, I couldn't make it any easier. Wonderful. Thank <laughs> you so much, William. I, I love this. This was a lot of new perspectives for me. I, I learned a lot today. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching, guys. Much light from Oslo. Bye bye. Yeah.